Hey, MGTOW fans, this is your buddy, MGTOW Jesus. Just calling in. Um, wanted to come over something with you guys. The reason I chose this picture today was because it shows Jesus being uh, uh, overlooking the city of Jerusalem. It comes from the time when Jesus wept or whatever. Uh, the point, I, reason I chose this uh, was because this is me looking at the job market, looking at society. And my biggest concern my biggest concern is having to uh, go back into that. The job market is such a dangerous place for MGTOW, in my opinion, especially one like myself. Uh, I'm so avid on treating people equally that I think women mistake equal treatment as misogyny. And that's not my fault, but it is my, it's my punishment. I'm paying the consequence, I'm paying the price, being a man and treating a woman equally, I'm paying the consequence for her inability to process uh, equal treatment. <laughs> and maybe that's me being too bold, saying, well, you may think you're treating them equally, but actually you're not, and you just need to understand, you need to wake up and, no, 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 absolutely not, absolutely not, don't give me that, don't give me that bullshit. So yeah, I'll sit and perch with my arms crossed and consider re-entering the job market. The scariest thing is what I'm good at is sales, marketing, and public speaking. And what terrifies me is that that is the very same place that I have the maxed exposure to women. In my opinion, it is. Because if I deal with hundreds of customers, about 30% of them... 40% of them will be women. And out of that 40%, let's say I talk to 40 women, there is bound to be one, at least one, that's had a bad day. Or doesn't like the way a man talks to her when he talks to her like a person instead of a baby. And that's my fault, right? It's my fault. Because all it takes, guys, all it takes in the job market is one woman to have a chip on her shoulder and you have to say the one thing that just sets her off and that's it you're done she'll say you harassed her she'll say you were insulting she'll say whatever it is that she feels she needs to say and what's so sad in our economy in our society in our job marketplace and in the public eye if a woman thinks or feels like, maybe you make her uncomfortable. She doesn't even have to know why. I've even listened to girls, to, to, I say I'll call them girls, because they're being little girls, and say to an employer, when I was an assistant manager, and listen to a woman make a complaint to an employer, she says, I feel uncomfortable around this gentleman. And I don't even know what it is that he does, or he didn't really necessarily say something specific, but I just feel uncomfortable around him. And my manager had to do what he had to do by HR and law and still push the issue forward. A talk to his, co talk to the co-worker, uh, make a formal uh, report, and all this kind of stuff. And so even though the guy, even though the manager decided, well, the guy really hasn't done anything wrong and until we actually have something tangible, I mean, the best, the worst I can do at this point is just, you know, have a conversation with him. Well, here's the issue with that, too. Yeah, have a conversation with him. About what? What are you going to say to him? Uh, some woman felt uncomfortable around you. And the, and the, and the, I was there for this. And the employee says, well, what did I, what did she say I did? Did I do something wrong? And he goes, well, she doesn't, she's not really 100% sure. She just feels uncomfortable around you. So if you can avoid her, that would, you know, that would probably make sure things, but just don't, just don't talk to her or anything. Don't, don't even approach her about it or anything. Just because, and he just, basically, he's saying, keep a safe distance, you don't want to poke the bear. Well, holy shit, is that not an, uh, uh, an aggressive workplace, or whatever they want to call it. I've heard that term so many damn times, why don't I remember what it's called? Um, uh, uncomfortable workplace, a dangerous work, no. You know what I'm talking about. Anyways. So... <laughs> You have this now. This guy has to look at this to see this woman and think, "I don't want to poke the bear, right?" Oh my God! At any moment, my entire freaking career, my entire work reputation, and everything I've worked for, my family at home, and the children I'm feeding, 
all depend on how this woman feels today. And that's okay. And that's, but that's oppressing them, right? Oh, women are oppressed. Right, I got it. The guy that has to walk around eggshells at home around his wife in fear that she may just decide one day that she's not happy enough and it's his fault and she needs to take everything and his children and his dog and while we're at it, put him in a fucking hotel where he pays 150 a week, right? And then when he goes to work, he has to walk around eggshells around some oversensitive fucking mama bear that can't fucking control herself and doesn't even know why she feels uncomfortable. She doesn't even know. There's there's nothing. She's like, I don't know why. He just makes me... Maybe it's his facial hair. Maybe it's the way his eyes look. Maybe it's his jawline. Maybe it's the size of his package that I can see in his pants because I'm projecting my sexuality. Who fucking knows what her problem is? The problem is, it's his responsibility now. And he's paying the consequence for her inabilities. Now, does that sound like the kind of place you want to go work? Does that sound like the kind of place you want to apply to? Is that the kind of fucking game that I have to subscribe? It shouldn't be. So I don't know. Maybe there's some employers out there that are MGTOW. Let me tell you something. I would love to come work for you. Because I'd love to come in there, bust some ass, make you a lot of money, make me a lot of money, build the credibility of the company, and get a lot more customers, clients, or public relations. I'm the guy you want on that. Because I'm the kind of guy that a client not only will see the logic in investing with, but a client will also say, hey, I can go have a beer with this guy. This guy seems like a lot of fun. I can crack the jokes. I can make him crack up. I can do all of it. And the fact that I have to fear poking the bear every time I go to work, it makes sitting on that rock a lot more comfortable than walking the streets of that city. And maybe there are other MGTOW out there. I don't know how you do it. Uh, Maybe you're in the right kind of work where you don't really deal with people directly or you have a job where you're your own boss and you can dictate how your days go in in more, uh, more continuously. I don't. I'm unemployed. It is what it is. I haven't been. I haven't turned down work. I've put a lot of applications, resumes, and I've done interviews, but it just hasn't really set well. But I think it's because other employers can kind of sense it. Because I used to be, if I applied to a job, and I got the interview, I got the job. It almost never happened that way. I've had a few jobs get turned down. I've had a few people call me back and say they decided not to. And I've literally had an HR person say, hey, you're 25, you know, you've got a good military background, you'll be fine. Why don't you just say what you're really thinking? Hey, you're 25, you're white, you're male, somebody will give you a job, you'll be fine. (laughs) You know what? If everyone thought that, I wouldn't be able to get a job, bitch. Anyways. The thing is, MGTOW, and I'm saying this even though I, I, I'm having trouble with it myself, don't be afraid to get out there. Don't be afraid to take that chance. But it's not fair for me to say that because in all deep down and honesty, I'm terrified of the workplace. I'm terrified of women at this point. I'm terrified of what society does with a woman's word. That's what scares me. I'm not physically scared of a female. I am terrified of the whims, the unpredictable whims of a female and how society acts upon those unfounded whims. That's why I think religion needs a kick in the ass, and that's why I think feminism needs to follow suit. Because right now, you've probably seen a shit ton of videos about Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn at the UN, and you've seen that they're trying to take social criticism on the internet and make it a literal, physical harassment. They're trying to translate cyber-bullying, or cyber-poking, as they call it, cyber-touching, into actual physical consequence. And they're relating as a person telling them that they suck at their job and they're full of shit as literally violence in the real world. And the fact that they even have a platform at the UN 
should be a big indicator to all MGTOW and anyone who's anti-feminist that the platform they have is real, tangible power over what they think is real and tangible, even though it's immaterial. You can simply shut your computer off. You can simply log out of Twitter. You don't need to be on Twitter to have a job. You don't. You know, it's it's like it's like telling someone that a cell phone isn't necessary in today's society. A cell phone is come on. It's you need it. You don't need Tumblr to apply for a job. You don't need Twitter to go to work. You, I think it's smart for everyone to have a computer and an internet connection because how many places have you applied if you walked in and said, yeah, I'm actually looking for a job, and they say, oh, go to our website and apply online. Everyone does that now. You can't walk into a fast food restaurant. You can't walk into a McDonald's without them saying, oh, you have to use the internet, blah, blah, blah. And they used to have those kiosks. Hell, you go to Walmart. You can go walk into Walmart, and they'll take you back to a computer and have you do it over there straight online and it's just as easy if you did it from home you can't go anywhere anywhere major maybe a mom and pop store and they'll give you a good old job because you're like friends with their family at church or some shit and even then for the records they'll probably ask you to fill it out online if you don't have internet you have to do it at their at their office but that's the problem is there are certain necessities but these women, these these fucking spokeswomen, have gone so far as to take something cyber and immaterial, just digits and ones and zeros, and actually try to get people to see it as a physical representation. That it's the cyber representation of physical violence and should be treated as such. Oh my god. So yeah, you can see why MGTOW Jesus is a little nervous to go back inside those city walls knowing what's about to happen. Because that's what this happened. This The Jesus wept was just before he was going to be crucified in the story. So he already knew that once he re-entered the city and did what he had to do by the story, okay, understand I'm an atheist, but by the story, this character had to do what he had to do. He had to do what he believed in, but he knew that he was going to be crucified, not, you know, I mean, we're talking literally crucified for speaking his mind. Crucified for disagreeing with society. And I, f I feel like I'm in the same boat. That I have, to, I have to apply. The society is asking me to go back out there and face it again. And face the, the misandry. And face the bullshit. And face the fucking injustice all over again. And if I don't, well then I'm lazy and I'm not contributing to society and I should be a homeless motherfucker. And if I do, well then I'm just a glutton for punishment, aren't I? Does that make any sense? That is what happens when you're physically assaulted by harassment. I was physically harassed by women. Because they changed my life and they made it unstable and they've made it a dangerous world that I live in. Now that is physical causing physical. I, any hate that I've gotten in my email about my, my channel, any hate or anything on my, on my te uh, in my uh, comments below have been very minimal. But I wouldn't say that if I was threatened or told that I suck... Ha I wouldn't say that it has anything to do with my real world, with my life, because it doesn't. How dare these feminists do this? But the reality is, it only takes two stupid people, two women, just takes two women in two different occasions to say something that's full of shit, to destroy my credibility, to take away the years I've put into the experience I've gained on the job. To be good at what I do. They've taken that away from me. Because they had a bad day. Because one one woman was told by another woman, I felt kind of uncomfortable. I'm just going to go the long way around him. And she doesn't even know why she's uncomfortable. Doesn't even have anything. No example. Nothing I said to her or anything. Just eh. He made eye contact with me, but he's not hot enough. 
So I don't like that he made eye contact with me. Now, if he was hotter, I would have been flattered. But he's not hot enough by my standards. So I'm uncomfortable. Oh, well, if that's the case, then I'll approach him and I'll accuse him of things and we'll just see how, how well he sweats. That's basically what happened the first time. The second time, a woman hit a $1,000 grill. So the motive is pretty clear. She thought she was going to get in trouble and wanted to make sure I got in trouble so she would never be held responsible for the potential damage she may have caused. That's all it was. But that alone was enough for people to say, oh, well, pfft, you're gone. And I'm like, well, look at the camera. I didn't do anything. Look, look, go look, go look. She's full of shit. Go look. Please look. I am asking you to go sit down in that room at this time. Go ahead. Fast forward your fucking footage. I know you record everything because I've worked in this part department before. Go look at it. Take five minutes out of your fucking day to save my career. Well, we don't shame our customers. No, no, no. You don't shame women. That's what it is. You don't want a woman's word to be questioned because if it's discovered that she's full of shit, which it easily would have if you took five minutes out of your day, if it's discovered that she's full of shit, well, then that's going to bring into question all the other complaints you've ever got. That's going to validate any other person out there that sued you for this kind of thing. If you can prove that women are full of shit, well, then that brings reasonable doubt to everyone else that you have fucked over in the last... God knows how long you've been around. <sighs> so I have to make the decision as a voice of MGTOW, I guess. As one that carries weight, I guess, with my 248 subscribers. <laughs> Ooh. I have to do the most terrifying thing in order to continue my philosophy, in order to continue and live it, as I spoke in my other, about uh, having doubts. And I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to do it for you guys. Because I won't be able to make content if I live under a bridge. Right? <laughs> I mean, I have a desktop, so... I, I won't be able to, to have a, f a leg to stand on telling people how they should live their life if I'm scared enough not to go live it, right? So I have to put that fear aside. It's a healthy fear. To be aware of danger is a natural reaction to survival. But being immobilized by the fear is what will kill you. This is MGTOW Jesus. Thanks for listening.